don't seem like they're going to be crowd pleasers. Ugh. So, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, oh. So the it's uh, the best description I've heard of it is it's a movie starring the extras from the last movie uh, because of unfortunate circumstances. But what yeah. seems to have really been making the rounds is everybody complaining about Namor. Or excuse me, Namor. Namor, yes. Yeah, then and uh, yeah, the the the, um, the retconning of his of the of his origins, well, specifically in the the origins of his name. Uh, from uh, I watched the in uh, full disclosure, I don't know anything about Namor. Um, but uh, from uh, the Midnight's Edge stream that I watched, uh, apparently in the comic books, his name meant. Avenger of uh, Avenger of the Sun or Sun Avenger or something like that, something along those lines. So, so let's take a step back. Now, okay. Namor has the actually Stan Lee always pronounced it Namor, and he was Namor. probably around to talk with the creator at the time. So, mm-hmm. I'll go with Namor. So, Namor, he, he was actually the first superhero. Oh, oh, hey, Indy right. Wrestling Aces. Hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, it's good to see you. Um, Anyway, Namor was actually what at the time I believe was Timely Comics's first, is either, I think it was Timely Comics, their first superhero, because mm. they said, oh, this, this Superman guy is making some money. I forget if Batman would have come out yet, but uh, they said, okay, mm. well, what do we got that's kind of like a Superman? And somebody came up with, uh, oh, well, he's uh, the. The, king, the, the prince of Atlantis or the king of Atlantis and uh, he comes to the surface world and he has wings on his feet so he can fly. <laughs> and he, what's his personality? Like? He's kind of an enormous dick. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, he is the oldest hero in the Marvel Universe, at least in terms of creation. Yeah. Like he predates the human torch, like the android human torch in Captain America. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, and yeah, Ninja Terrier, Namor, King of Atlantis, tries to get Sue Richards from her husband, one of the oldest heroes. Yeah, it's like and there's a lot to Namor. Like he was from the from day one, you could argue that he was like an anti. He was almost like a Black Adam style anti hero. Mm-hmm. One of his first major adventures, or one of his like one of the big things that people remember, was that time that he had a war with the Android Human Torch and flooded New York. In the in the forties, wow! <laughs> I forget why he was pissed off at the Human Torch in the Human World because I haven't read the comic. I've just seen pages from it in this uh, old History of Marvel comic I had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but damn, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when he came back in the sixties, he got like a the Human Torch, like the Johnny Storm Human Torch, found him as a homeless man wandering around New York because he'd been away from the ocean too long, so he'd cut, his mind had gone. Uh. So Human Torch picks him up, dumps him in the ocean once he realizes he's Namor, and Namor goes, to, goes home to Atlantis and finds out it had been destroyed by nuclear testing. Uh. He was not happy, so uh, that's, yeah. that's where his interactions with the Fantastic Four began. Ah, uh. <laughs> and ever since then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, 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 he made another pass at New York twenty years after the first one. He nearly destroyed New York in his return issue because Atlantis got destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> now, mind you, they they retconned that because I think they eventually decided that yeah, it would be more fun to have Atlantis around still. Mm-hmm. But but ever since then, he's he's never been like a mainstay character. But I would call him one of those major flavor characters that. Uh, the Marvel Universe, who's it's fun when he shows up. Hmm. So it's like, I don't, you know, a lot of people don't want to read a comic book about Doctor Strange or um, like Doctor Strange himself, solely or Nick Fury, but they're characters that when they show up, it's a cool deal. Hmm. Okay. So, so, like, one of those seasoning characters that doesn't necessarily need their own focus all the time, but they've hmm. flirted with ha- giving him diff- his own comic books over time. Okay, and uh, yeah, and so so now he uh, it, now well now he's got history with Black Panther. Yeah, which I think is vaguely based on a comic from I want to say the Christopher Priest era, or or maybe the one of the later runs where Atlantis and Wakanda had a war. Mm. 
<laughs> okay, Holy Ninja has some more Namor dirt that Namor dirt that I don't. Yeah. Let's see. He financed a, a film just to get rid of Mr. Fantastic Human Torch and the thing so that he can you guess it, try to make Sue Storm as <laughs> woman. <laughs> to be fair, he does run around in a green speedo. Yeah. <laughs> and uh I think it's uh that was the se- okay, second encounter with the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just I'm just laughing now because, like, everything Namor does sounds ridiculous and over the top. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, In that fun comic booky way that we often don't get anymore. Well, yeah. Well, well, who who wouldn't want to make a, a movie to to <laughs> to 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 get with Sue Storm or Sue Richards or yeah you know. <laughs> yeah whatever she was at the time. Yes. <laughs> but. Um, so that's kind of the fun asshole Namor that we all know and love. Okay. Um, so a lot of people have been objecting to um, a lot of people have been objecting to this particular rendition of Namor because it is kind of it's weird. It's like it's surface level. Some of the elements are there. He still has the green speedo. He has the wings on his ankles, which kind of look really stupid in live action, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. It's, it's, it's comic book accurate, but that's one situation where they might have been better off coming up with an alternative way to make him fly. Yeah. <laughs> but he just... The, the, the problem I have is that they've... How to put it? How to put it? So Namor clearly has a history of being wronged by the surface world, right? Uh-huh. That so that if if they if they're doing this thing where they're having Namur here, <laughs> I even have it pronounced wrong. Uh, yeah. If they, have, if they have Namur here, um, they have him have a history with Spanish colonialists, uh-huh. and they've they like integrated him into some like Aztec and Olmec myths from what I've heard, uh-huh. given him a name from there, just just made up an underwater. Um, his uh, indigenous city. Yeah. And, and. Well, well, well. The other thing too, the the Midnight's Edge stream I was talking about. Um, uh, you know, with with giving him, you know, the the Aztec or 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 Olmec or or maybe I mean, it might have been Mayan too. I can't remember. Um, but uh, you know, giving him those origins and then having him like be like a Spanish, you know, name. It's like. The Aztecs and the Mayans, and you know, they did not speak Spanish. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Uh, Ninjito, uh, are they trying to introduce the conflict between Atlantis and Wakanda? Okay, so that was a later yeah. thing that I was thinking. Okay, okay, which was yeah, only a thing because of Avengers versus X Men, and as say, Atlantis uh, should have been more Egyptian. See, I feel differently. I feel like Atlantis, you shouldn't have been able to pin down. A culture, yeah. Atlantis uh, can be either uh, for, for me, like it's usually Greek, mm-hmm. or um, or possibly Irish. Right. I mean, supposedly, if Atlantis would have existed, it probably was out in like the Azores or whatever. Mm-hmm. So but it could have could have really know. been anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Well, well, that's the beauty of Atlant. Uh, I think the beauty with Atlantis is it can be anything. It can be any culture, really. And for that matter, if they'd wanted to just keep it be Atlantis and cast this guy, I would have had less issue. But they've just completely excised it. Yeah. Well, part of me wonder. I wonder if they did that because of the DCEU with Aquaman. I, I have heard that they probably wanted to make some changes to get away from the DCEU's only billion dollar movie thus far. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's like th- th- there's a certain. So I, I was thinking about it, it's like, okay, is it the? It's, it's weird. This is, this isn't like a race swap. Like if they'd had this actor mm-hmm. and not had the ridiculous amount of jewelry here. Like I'm sorry, I've he he does like oh, he yeah. looks okay from the waist down, as far as the name war goes. But like he has way too much busyness going on. Yeah, yeah, little little yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, that's it's like a like a Mr. T starter kit. Yes. 
Man, can you imagine if they'd gotten Mr. T to be him? Imperious Rex, foo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Nam Namor was like explicitly like Imperious Rex was like his catchphrase, which I think is, yeah, it's Latin. Mm, yeah. Namor isn't hot enough to make Wakanda for over a billion dollars. Not with this actor. Like he's... No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, th th like this, this feels like that cultural appropriation thing people are always talking about. Mm-hmm. It makes it like it, it feels like uh, if for the Black Panther, they had gone and said, OK, so in the mountains of Japan, there is this isolated kingdom where they're protected by a guy who takes the essence of a melanistic tiger, the Black Panther, if you will. Ah. And he's the greatest samurai of them all. Ah, yeah. About as about as fitting. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or like if they decided to make Latveria when they bring in Doctor Doom, eventually, uh, if they decided like, oh, uh, Latveria is a Middle Eastern kingdom. Oh, like you you lose the flavor that is the character. Yes, like, we've we've talked a little bit about it, like uh, how we don't necessarily like have a problem with the race swap itself. It's like it's how big of a difference is it to the character. Uh -huh. Like I, yeah, I would say, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Like I, I was thinking about, you know, what are some uh, race swaps that don't matter? Like uh, Perry White in Man of Steel mm -hmm. makes no difference. I think it's Lawrence yeah. Fishburne playing him. He does a good job. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah, he actually, uh, the way he dressed and everything was a tribute to um, Ed Bradley from 60 Minutes. Hmm. But, yeah, yeah. But, but, but but yeah, that, that, yeah, he was good in that one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but uh, you brought up another good example of kind of taking the name and just stamping it on a character from uh, also from the DCEU. Mm -hmm. when we were talking about it. Uh, what Aquaman? Uh, Jimmy Olsen. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, right, right, right. Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Jimmy Olsen with uh, in Supergirl. Yeah, they just. Yeah, that that um, you know it. It's yeah, that's not an issue, but I mean, they completely changed that character on that TV show. I mean, he went from kind of the the nerdy kid to this oh, I'm this buff dude, and you know, like oh, and and I'm Supergirl's boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like which that that yeah, it's like it would have been just as weird if they'd had a redheaded guy being that character. Mm -hmm. It's just even more visually different because like that part of it with comic book characters in particular is that the visual aspect of them is such a big piece of it yeah yeah and uh it, it's you know we, we we've seen uh we've seen good casting of superheroes and we've seen bad casting of superheroes mm -hmm. and you know it's in, in the in a lot of the times and with uh with the, with the bad casting yeah it's it's like oh they don't look anything like them they don't sound anything like that character it's like yeah it's... why didn't you just make up something yeah exactly and I, I i almost thought to myself okay well maybe i'm just being unfair here maybe like namor is a concept that you can't really translate to live action and have it look good mm-hmm and then I found this thing from 2000 or 2019, which is a fake, like one of those clickbait YouTube videos or Namor introduced in uh, oh. in, in Marvel yeah. Endgame? Question yeah. mark, question mark, question mark. And their bad, obvious Photoshop here made me realize, okay, no, Namor has a nice, clean design with his like cool little vest here. Yeah. You could have totally done that. Yeah, and the, and they the I think they used uh, it, the that ad, the actor looks familiar. Um, where have I seen him before? Uh, yeah, he. Uh, but yeah, he looks he looks familiar. Um, but yeah, yeah, like I, he he probably would have been good as Namor. I I, I think it was. What am I I know, there's, I know there's some actor that I've seen making the rounds where, oh my god, he's got the arched eyebrows, he's got kind of like the flat head, he's got this, mm -hmm. that princely scowl down. Yeah. Yeah, but and, yeah, and then they they go with the other guy, and it's like, okay. 
yeah, the, you, you just yeah, and it sounds like it's just it almost sounds like it's there to scold a section of the audience. So it's just okay, f fine. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really planning on going anyway because you don't have the character that might have brought me in. So yeah, and you have Riri Williams. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I I watched that clip with Riri Williams. It's like oh. I didn't. <laughs> oh, I I watched this guy struggling to be just struggling to act as Namor and sound like it's more than like a Disney Plus show. Oh, jeez. Although to be fair, the other actors weren't really selling their kind of cookie cutter lines either. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Ninja Toe, number one, uh, number one of superhero design. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, and man, th this movie is going to be. I I fully predict that it'll make more money than Black Adam has in its first two weekends in its first weekend, but mm -hmm. it is going to fall off a cliff when people realize what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's it's not going to do nearly as well as the first one. No, it it has a. That's actually part of why Black Adam may have more of a chance than people might give it credit for because. Yeah, okay. On the weekend of the eleventh, of course, Black Panther is going to be first place. What else is there for it to be in first place? Uh, I I can't think of anything else coming out. Yeah, right. Nothing else is coming out. It's a Marvel movie that, uh, like, it's going to be number one. That's that's mm -hmm. not in question. Yeah, it's just how much are people going to actually come and try to see it? And I've told that person every week that I do this <laughs> at this time. <laughs> Oh well. Anyway, yeah. um, okay. So that I'm, I'm just kind of really disappointed at Namor because uh -huh. or Namor because it's like I, it's like She-Hulk where I didn't quite realize how much I was going to be irritated by it until we started talking about it because <laughs> it means like oh yeah. we're not gonna it's gonna be different now. Great. Oh yeah. Well and. and uh... Okay, the, the, this just hit me. Like, if they're doing, if they did that with the She Hulk and they're doing this with Namor, what are they going to do with X Men? Oh, I've I've been hearing bad rumors, but I don't, I didn't, I, I've avoided them just to shield myself from trauma, just because yeah. it already sounds like we're going to get Martin Luther King ish uh, and Malcolm X, Professor X, and uh, Magneto. Oh, man. oh, geez. So uh, we'll we'll see. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it means basically in a, when you're bringing people from, from a visual medium, it's different than if it was a novel or something or a live action yeah. thing. Like, yeah. um, okay, we'll take Columbo. If you had, I can't, I can't think of the name of an actor, but if you had a black or Latino or Asian actor come in to play Columbo, not much would change. No. Because as long as you have an actor who can communicate, you know, like do that sort of folksy two-level thing that Peter Falk was so good at, mm -hmm. where it's like comes off as a as an idiot, but also like people underestimate. In fact, you could argue that yeah. with implicit racism being a thing, that a black Columbo might actually be able to pull that off better for some people. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that, that that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> okay, black Columbo. If it happens next year, I want my check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um but like it was not like like there's nothing you know, of that like specifically tying colombo to that culture uh -huh. but but when you, and it's also it's like it's the role played by the actor when you have a when you have thousands of comics with drawings of a character i'm sorry if i expect the character that you're making to look like that drawing yeah 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 and um let's see if i Let's see if I have easy access. To it. So meanwhile, Holy Ninja says, uh, what are they doing with X-Men? Make the one third part of X-Men that focus on the allegory and make it the whole thing. People are totally not tired of it with every X-Men film doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I was trying, what I was trying to do here before I, I boomered it up here. Uh, no, not that one. Okay, so if I if we're casting this lady here, I would expect them to find somebody who looks as close to that as possible. 
yeah, like maybe some variants on the hair color, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Although that that can be fixed with a wig, but uh, or or hair dye, yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, like my my books, like while I do have art of most of my characters, I've I've thought through it, and there are a couple of characters where, like, okay, if we got Netflix casting on Rose and she was like Indian or black or something, would it necessarily be the biggest crime in the world? No, not really. Uh -huh. Rose is like the character I think you could race bend the easiest. Mm -hmm. There, there's some minor cast members that you could do that with too, but it, it's like I'd if it's I'd, I'd kind of like it to look like I wrote it. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. it's less, it's less of a deal with the book because everybody just imagines what they want anyway. True. Yeah. 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 I I don't know, man. It's uh, I I just find I, I just found hearing about this and watching the clip and. Just re it's it's like my realization with uh, with She Hulk and finding out about it is that we're never going to get a proper Planet Hulk or World War Hulk thing, and mm -hmm. they're kind of rubbing it in our faces. Now we're never going to get a comic book accurate live action anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the same kind of way we're never going to get the World War Two style comic book ac accurate Nick Fury. That doesn't mean that Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury is bad per se. It just it's just different. Yeah. Well, who who knows? Maybe you know multiverse. Yeah, yeah that, that that's the uh, get that's the uh, get out of jail card for any sort of bad take now. Yes, yes, multiverse. <laughs> I, I think we've belabored this enough. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Speaking of bad takes.